Hi, I'm Courtney Taylor, and this is Casting Cues, and we are back with casting director Kim Harden. You've cast some really small, like, kind of Sundance sleeper hits, and you've cast things like Too Fast, Too Furious, mm -hmm. pretty big time movies. Right. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the difference between the two as far as the process goes. It, it, can, it can vary in the time span that we have to do our job as a casting director. Sometimes with your bigger budget films you have a longer period of time because they have more budget, um, uh, a larger budget for, you know, for money wise. Um, and sometimes on your smaller films you, they don't have that much time so therefore you have to be able to, we have to get our job done a lot faster. Uh, I, I feel that I get an opportunity to be a little bit more creative on the independent films, uh, which I really enjoy doing. I love it, discovering new talent. Um, so that's kind of the difference. And, and I like to be able to, to pay actors you know, their rates and their quotes, which we're able to do on the larger budget films too. So um, that's kind of the flip side of it for me. So when you say going, you know, finding new talent, can you elaborate a little bit on where you go or how you do tap right. into new talent? Yeah, um, a lot of the films that I've done, I feel like over the years I've had opportunity to do um, open calls. I am, uh, when I'm casting a film, I really look at every single submission that comes to me, whether it's through you know email, electronic submission, hard copy. Um, I really use um, Actors Access from the Breakdown Service now. Uh, and I was allowing people to send me material whenever I would be on a film before they kind of opened it up because there used to be a time where if you didn't have representation you really couldn't get in the door. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of didn't come from that school the way that I kind of came up in working in the business. We looked at any and everyone that kind of submitted themselves. Um, so <clears throat> I encourage actors to submit themselves to try to get into your in front of your face by any means necessary. If I'm not having an open call, a lot of times now, especially the last couple of films, I mean people have put their audition on YouTube and sent it to me. Mm -hmm. um, some people, they'll, they'll send their demo reels unless they really have a look I'm looking for for that particular role. I may not look at everyone's demo reel or I may assign my one of my staff members to make sure that they kind of comb through it and see who's got a little something. Um, but I mean, it, I know it's tough out there for actors, so definitely by any means necessary when I am currently looking. How do you conduct your sessions? Obviously, each project is probably a little bit mm -hmm. different, but mm -hmm. maybe you can highlight some of the consistencies for people so that they know when they come in to read for Kim Harden a little bit of what they can expect. Um, it doesn't really kind of matter location for me. Mm -hmm. Because my process really pretty much is the same. I, whenever I'm working on a film, I will release a breakdown. Uh, so everyone knows that I'm actively searching for, for characters. Uh, I don't tape my pre-screens. Uh, I do tape my director-producer sessions so that the director will have an opportunity to, to review whatever talent that he's seen that he may you know, like. And um, it's pretty much the same cycle for us as casting directors. You know, some casting directors, either they may do their pre-screens or they may not. Uh, and we all, we keep our running lists of ideas or who we've brought in and then who's kind of coming down to the final choices. I mean, you know, all you really need is a room and a camera, really. <laughs> and a computer and a phone to stay organized. So it's not, um, I kind of, at a younger age developed liking being that gypsy and going from office to office uh, because just staying in one spot all the time it gets boring for myself either uh, you know as well I just um, the energy of working with each new group on each new film just helps bring that energy to that particular project so um, I always said you know have bags will travel <laughs> What's some advice that of something that you look for in a great, you know, online YouTube type submission? You know, the ones that tend to make it that I've discovered, it's something about th that it factor. And it's nothing that we can really kind of pinpoint as a casting director. I think we just know it when we see it. And we kind of know it when they come in the room because there's, 
usually a you know a smorgasbord of things that we're looking for. You know, mm -hmm. it'll always start off with a look, um, and then just kind of trickle down from there. But some people have started off their audition and been horrible. But they, it's maybe the way they say a line or two. And if the director is up for bringing on a coach to work with them during the production of the, the, the film, then they gain a little bit more and more strength in working with that coach throughout the filming. You know, so when they're putting themselves on tape, it's just about them, you know, having done all their research in regards to the character, the, the physicality that we're looking for, um, you know, making sure if they, I don't expect for them necessarily to totally be off book. If they have it memorized, that's just a greater advantage. Um, but to have done their homework and know what they're, they're doing so that, you know, we can see the real talent and skill of what we're looking for for that scene. That wraps it up for another segment of Casting Cues. I'm Courtney Taylor. Thanks so much for joining us.